along with the many other unexplainable feats, undoubtedly left by a highly advanced, highly capable lost civilization. There are the countless examples of extreme precision stone cutting. Not only is this remarkable past capability visible in their many stone walls and fortresses alike, but also in their exquisite artwork. If we look upon the statues of ancient Egypt, for example, the symmetry, along with the proportional precision present within their statues, is not only perfection personified, but unquestionably far too advanced for the so-called academically claimed builders to have achieved. According to the academics, along with their subsequent supposed accurate writings, these extraordinary feats of artistic perfection were somehow created by a group of individuals who were merely equipped with copper tools. Not only is this claim clearly ignorant of reality, but to create such works of symmetrical accuracy was unquestionably the work of a group of individuals far more advanced than even that of the Victorians, let alone those who thrived along the banks of the Nile more than 3,000 years ago. Not only is this precision present along the Giza Plateau, but it is also found at ancient sites all around the world. Masterfully created statues and structures, often carved straight out of stone bedrock, with such vision and artistic prowess that many now presume that the individuals capable of such feats must have had advanced machinery at their disposal. Most of ancient India, for example, is created with such delicacy and exactness that we today could only accomplish the same with the utilization of modern machines. Furthermore, many scholars and independent researchers, even a number of highly recognized academic Egyptologists, have reluctantly concluded that many of the basalt, gypsum, and other vases shaped from extremely hard stones, and indeed a number of multi-ton sarcophagus lids, were indeed turned into the shapes we see them as today, on some kind of ancient, enormous lathe. This conclusion is made regardless of the fact that to create such enormous stoneworks on a lathe would have undoubtedly been out of the realms of capabilities for those who are currently claimed as their creators. Not only do the ornamental artifacts of Egypt and much further afield strongly indicate machined working, but there is also overwhelming evidence of these same machines reminiscent of modern stone cutting equipment present all over the world. Yet, conveniently, it is quietly ignored by the same individuals who have supposedly unraveled the history of these sites. Puma Panku, Giza's basalt floor, other areas throughout Giza, Peru, Malta, the list goes on. All these sites not only indicate an advanced, highly capable constructor, but also possess countless marks that, as of yet, we can only explain logically as having been left by precision, quick-rotation, stone-cutting machinery. They are yet another overwhelming collection of evidence, which not only flies in the face of current academic explanation, but proof of an advanced, now lost civilization having once been responsible for these sites' construction. They are highly compelling. A number of people who frequent our work have requested a more detailed video regarding one of the mysteries we so often focus upon here on the channel. There are many sites that we feel are deserving of in-depth focus. Our mission has always been to enlighten those who may not have been aware of the many different, compelling, and often controversial realities surrounding countless ancient ruins that throughout their lives have been explained away with a lie. Undoubtedly, the most well-known, most commonly explored, and thus the ruin most suited for our viewers' acquirement of a knowledge armory is Giza. Indeed, there are many people you will meet throughout your life that will have delved into the mysteries of Egypt. However, this experience, unbeknownst to them, may have been fraught with a limited, illogical, academic account regarding the history of Giza's plateau. This video, then, is our gift to our viewer. To prove to all those who act like they know it all how little they actually do. The characteristics of the casing stones 
are undoubtedly one of our own most noted achievements. We feel little, if any, notice has been given to the facts we have realized regarding these stones. Yet, the evidence we have found will remain clear for all to see. These casing stones, although of an enormous size and as such were left by a lost civilization, are far younger than the sandstone in which they encase. Most of these casing stones, unfortunately robbed out during invasions within the last few centuries, are protecting stones which are actually far more eroded and thus far older beneath. However, additionally, we began to wonder just how old could the Great Pyramids be? Could these eroding sandstones actually be concealing a far larger, far older structure beneath? Also discovered here on our channel, the supporting evidence to this hypothesis, most notably along the east side of Khufu and in numerous other places where the smaller sandstones have been robbed out, is, as we suspected, a far larger exoskeleton. We strongly believe these enormous megalithic blocks that we have previously estimated to be many hundreds of tons in weight are actually the original oldest blocks of the pyramids. We also believe that the more modern, currently recognized casing stones were actually inspired by these more heavily eroded smaller sandstone blocks, now concealing these mammoth megaliths. This makes the layers we believe that adorn the Great Pyramid numbers three, with the two more modern layers being conservation efforts, undoubtedly undertaken at vastly different times within history. Just how old is the Great Pyramid? Just how impressive was ancient Egypt? For example, the oldest surviving obelisk at Heliopolis, and therefore in Egypt, was undeniably cut transported and lifted into position at an unknown time in history, using now lost technology and knowledge. It is a stone 20 meters in height, weighing an astonishing 121 tons. And this enormous, unexplainable, impossible monolith is not the only one left upon the plateau. There are many more dotted all over Giza. For example, the sarcophagus of Amenemet III a pair of quartzite monoliths, discovered in the early 20th century, hang above this supposed tomb. These gigantic stones effortlessly support the weight above, each estimated to weigh 110 metric tons. The Colossi of Memnon, these two gigantic artworks were built from single pieces of stone. They are orientated toward the sunrise at winter solstice estimated to weigh anywhere from 600 to 1,000 tons each. Modern technology allows for the movement of such weights. However, any civilization claimed by academia, actually once being responsible for the transportation of such stones, is absurd. Who could have possibly transported such enormous stones to these locations? Not only transported them, but worked them into masterpieces they once were disposing of all waste, presumably also weighing many tons. And there are many others. In the temple east of Khafre's Pyramid, for example, there lay blocks regularly, yet quietly estimated to weigh over 400 tons. How can modern academia claim such tasks were undertaken by our modern ancestors? Anyone aware of the true accomplishments involved in the construction of the Giza Plateau must now see this hypothesis as severely lacking any satisfactory explanations. Mortuary Temple of Menkaura still possesses some astonishing unexplained feats. There are some estimates of the blocks within the temple, most notably within the surviving walls of the mortuary, weighing as much as 220 tons. The heaviest granite ashlars, imported from Aswan Quarry many miles away, weighing in at more than 30 tons. There are many incredible, inexplicable features upon the Giza Plateau. Many of them, unfortunately, yet predictably, little shared academically. Yet it remains a place of invaluable existent truths, many discrediting that which are passed off as current academic fact. Giza is an astonishing place and the one we feel most likely to expose academia once and for all. It is a plateau we find highly compelling.
We often cover the as yet unexplained features that can be found within the construction of many of the ancient ruins all over the world. These seemingly impossible feats of ancient architecture, seen by all, yet perceived by an academia that would like you to believe they were completed a mere few thousand years ago. Yet any explanation as to how these tasks were indeed undertaken or completed remain absent. We strongly suspect that a vast portion of Earth's and indeed our own human history is being covered up, simply because those who wish to sell you the answers do not have them. It is far more profitable for those in the so-called know to be perceived as indeed all-knowing, rather than to admit the patent fact they simply cannot explain these ancient structures. They do not know who built them, and most important of all, no idea when they were built. Countless museum artifacts also that, according to these same individuals, regardless of the obvious precision contained within, were created by individuals far less capable than we are today. Often absent or attached to illogical explanations as to their manufacture, these artifacts continue to be attributed to civilizations whose most advanced carving technologies were copper and stone chisels. We feel that many of these ancient artifacts, along with many impossible ancient megaliths found perfectly placed within ancient ruins all over the world, are strong evidential factors to suggest that an ancient civilization once had at their disposal highly advanced precision machinery. One of the many interesting, perplexing ancient features are the ancient star holes, which have been discovered at a number of different ancient sites around the planet. Although places like Puma Ponku or Giza's basalt plain possess precision drill holes, diving many feet into incredibly hard stone, these star holes are, as the title suggests, mysteriously created in the shape of stars. So far found within Massachusetts in the USA, and also within Volda in Norway, their existence, we feel, are proof of an ancient drilling technology, far superior to our own today, let alone our recent ancestors. How were these holes created, or indeed why? A number of these particular drill holes can be found within Volda, and a number have also been discovered within the surrounding area of Flint County Quarry, Massachusetts, although, interestingly, each slightly different in shape. Are these seemingly impossible drill holes evidence left by a lost civilization? Intriguingly, when the star holes occur, they only cover part of the total length of that particular hole, the remainder of the hole still having the typical round cylindrical shape. However, mysteriously, the length of the rifled grooves and their position within the hole varies considerably with each drill hole, sometimes even occurring midway through a rock ancient star holes, an as yet unexplained ancient feature, which we find highly compelling. Found in Siberia, and dating back to a time said by modern science to have been that of the Denisovan species of early humans, scientists have confirmed this bracelet is 40,000 years old, making it the oldest piece of jewelry ever discovered. The bracelet was discovered at a site now known as Denisova Cave, in the Altai region of Siberia in 2008. After detailed analysis, Russian experts now accept that the bracelet's age is authentic. Scientists explained it away, sorry, concluded, that it must have been made by our prehistoric human ancestors, the Denisovans, an extinct species of humans, and just showed them to have been far more advanced than ever realized. However, further analysis has left them in a bit of difficulty, with their conclusions as to who the makers could have been, a hole initially thought to have been caused by erosion, is actually a purposely placed drill hole, created by the maker of the bracelet, by using what can only be assumed, was a fine jeweler's drill. Writing in the Novosibirsk magazine, science first hand, Dr. Derivyanko said, two fragments of the bracelet were found, with a width of 2.7 cm and a thickness of 0.9 cm. Near one of the cracks is a drilled hole with a diameter of about 0.8 cm. Studying the drill hole, reluctant scientists found that the speed of rotation of the drill's bit would have been rather high, fluctuations minimal, and that it was applied with an advanced implement, 
technology that has come in for more recent times, Dr. Derevyanko told the Siberian Times. Predictably, since this feature was discovered, the scientific community's forthcoming explanations have fallen silent. Who made this bracelet? It seems it is left to all those who do not have to protect a career within a paradigm to postulate and ponder. When one explores the most fascinating and ancient of structures resting all over our planet, you will inevitably be confronted by baffling feats on engineering and ingenuity, tasks that, to modern man, escape understanding or indeed explanation. The main consensus regarding these ancient structures has always been a tricky thing to explain. To claim that these marvelous structures were built by primitive people with only primitive tools at their disposal does not only seem absurd to most who have visited such sites, but ignorant of their true past grandeur and the specific characteristics of each of these places. Ancient sites, such as Giza, Machu Picchu, among many others, still contain very confusing artifacts, anomalous evidence, which tells a very different story to that of mainstream history. Apart from the Baghdad battery, largely claimed to have been an ancient form of electroplating, there has been little in the way of physical evidence to suggest the use of electricity within the academically researched ancient times. Yet, there are many remnants left which suggest such activities. Not only are there countless clear examples of past machine work stone, but most importantly, there is evidence of errors made by these same tools, misstarts and discovered fault lines, these particular stones discarded, laid bare in the quarries, revealing all the hallmarks of the machine engineering that went into building these wonderful places, these artifacts, once rubbish, now historical treasures. They can tell you the shape and movements of the tools that were being used, showing just how these machines cut into the stones, core drillings also discarded during manufacture, and cut stones discarded due to faults and cracks, revealing the complete preliminary cut marks left by the ancient stonecutters. These fragments of past activities are clearly some of the most important in unraveling these sites' ultimate secrets, yet it is rarely shared in the public arena and even less frequently researched by official bodies. Along with this vast and perplexing array of remnants, mercilessly left where they fell, strewn amongst the debris of disruption, lay countless extremely hardy machine stone jars, vessels made from some of the hardest rocks on Earth. Some of these jars were made with a round bottom, perfectly machined, balanced on a base no bigger than the tip of a chicken's egg. Sir William Flinders Petrie ultimately realized that only lathe turning could have produced the symmetry and balance found on thousands of these bowls and vases. And Petrie was no fool. In 1894, he founded his own archaeological body, the Egyptian Research Account, which later became the British School of Archaeology in Egypt. He stated, for example, a bowl maker attained curves of exact circularity by rotating the bowl around a fixed blade and formed a lip by shifting the centering of the bowl. Another round-bottom vase had walls of such uniform thickness that it balanced perfectly on a curved base. To have a very well-respected researcher and specialist of the ancient Egyptians to admit to a conviction of the use of power tools in these pots construction seems like quite a stunning position to take, especially when one considers that while metal chisels could have been used to shape soft limestone within ancient Egyptian times, the metals that were available to them – copper, bronze, and during the first millennium BCE, wrought iron – were far too soft to work such rock into such exquisite designs. It seems Petri would like to remain honest regarding his conclusions, yet also incomplete with his explanations preferring to let the receiver of said information make their own realizations, preferring to avoid complication by a, by this time, rather visible enemy. One could only conclude that these relics and ancient monuments thereof were not the work of the Egyptians. But further evidence to suggest that these baffling structures were built far before the ancient Egyptians, before academic understandings, by a highly technologically advanced pre-cataclysm civilization. We find it difficult to see how such work was undertaken or an explanation for our finding can be made without the use of power tools. 
Thankfully, the more we learn regarding these enigmatic places, the more we become aware of regarding their true history, and the closer, it seems, we become to finding those who built them.